Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash out of work here, lady. And today we have two great stories. So let's get started. The owner wondered if I worked there. Several years ago, my entire dad's family decided to get a family portrait done. That would be 16 of us. My aunt, who was hosting, made an appointment at a well-known portrait studio. Our session was the first of the day. So we got dressed up and arrived about 15 minutes early to be told that the photographer was running late, so we were asked to take a seat and wait. So we sat. And waited. And waited. And waited. As time passed, other groups came in, each one being told that the photographer was running late. So we waited. And waited. And waited. 15 minutes passed, then 20, then 45, then an hour and a half. Various people would go to the desk to ask the young lady when the photographer was expected. She had no idea. The photographer wasn't answering her phone. She had called the owner and hadn't gotten a response. There was nothing she could do. More and more people came in. The lobby was full. All of the chairs were taken and still more people came. Some groups got frustrated with the wait and left. Our group had been gathered from all over the United States and we knew we would never be together like this again. We couldn't leave. After two hours, with the constant questions, the lobby overflowing, the owner and the photographer not answering calls, the receptionist was crying. She stood up, grabbed her purse, and stomped out, saying, I am not paid enough for this. Then the phone began ringing. It rang several times, then stopped. Then it started again. Then it stopped. This went on for about five to ten minutes. The people in the lobby were getting louder and louder in their frustration, both at the wait and at the unanswered phone. Finally, when it started ringing for about the 15th time, I stood up and answered it. I'd been sitting closest to the desk and was an admin at that time and quickly fell into my receptionist persona. When the phone rang this time, I didn't wait and just answered it. This is Photo Studio. How may I help you? It was a customer trying to schedule a sitting. That wasn't going to happen, so I asked him to call back. Then another customer called and another. Then the phone rang again. Thank you for calling Photo Studio. How may I help you? There was dead silence on the other end of the line. Then a click as the call was disconnected. There was a blissful silence for about 10 minutes. Then the phone began to ring again. This is Portrait Studio. How can I help you? Again, silence. Then a man's voice. This is the owner. Who are you? Are you new? Where's the receptionist? Oh, I replied. No, I don't work here. I'm a customer. We've been waiting for the photographer for over three hours now. Our appointment was at eight this morning. It's almost noon now. The receptionist? She walked out? Uh, the photographer hasn't shown up? Well, call me when she does. I don't work here. You want a job? No, I want my picture taken and some lunch. So do all the other people waiting here. How many people are waiting? About 40. What? 40? Yep. Where's the photographer? Not here. I'll be there in 10 minutes. She's going to be fired. By now, I was actually seated behind the desk and answering calls as they came in. About three minutes later, the photographer breezed in carrying a cup of coffee and a fast food bag. I'm sorry about running late. Hope you haven't been waiting long. Only about three hours, I replied. She stopped and stared at the desk. Who are you? And where's the receptionist? She walked, I said, about an hour ago. Why'd she leave? Because you didn't show up and people were getting nasty about it. Well, I told her I'd be a little late. A little late? We've been sitting here for three hours. Oh, well, come on back then. I guess I'll eat lunch later. As we left, I saw a man at the desk answering calls and apologizing to the people waiting in the lobby. The owner called my aunt later that evening to apologize and offer restaurant gift cards and a free sitting. Oh, and the photographer had indeed been fired. What the hell's wrong with people? Hope you at least got your pictures. Okay, our second story for today. I no longer work here, but enjoy your conviction. So, the university I used to work at part-time as a barista at a local non-chain place that was heavily frequented, this lady who owned the place was mildly famous in the coffee world, having won awards such as Best Barista, Best Cafe, numerous times. After a few years working there, I also managed to snag a few barista awards, which is where the problem happened. As anyone who drinks coffee knows, once you get a barista cafe you like, you tend to stick with them, like a raccoon sticks to an unlocked dumpster. So I had a few people who only ever came in on my shift. It was mostly good. People tended to be polite, but picky. Was at this stage debating if I wanted to make a career move into cafes, but I didn't mind the few annoying people we got, cost of business and all. 
There was, however, one small group of very annoying people who would come in every Friday around 5.20. We close at 5.30. In their pack of four to five, before shuffling back to the gaming shop a few doors down, much as I don't mind gamers, being one, Pathfinder FTW, a couple of these guys were the stereotype never-bathe variety and would fill the cafe with an aroma somewhere between week-old pizza and I saw a shower once and it scared me. Didn't help that they tended to order the most sugary, messy, and non-coffee drinks on order. Frappes, iced coffees, usually with three to four syrups, etc. It was a huge pain in the butt to clean, pain in the butt to serve, and they made sure every Friday that we finished 15 minutes later than we should have since they didn't want anyone but me making their damn drinks. Fast forward a few years, recently graduated and starting work in a new career. All's well, celebrating at the cafe since by now I'm very good friends with the owner and other staff, Officially stopped working here several weeks ago when sitting final exams, etc. Good times. The mistake was this was Friday afternoon. The owner had closed us a half hour early to throw a small party, so while all the chairs were still out, all the signage had been brought in and turned off. Q520, and our wonderful pack shuffles by. Undeterred by the lack of open signs, the locked side doors, and the sign on the door that said, Private Party, they shamble inside and mull around the counter. Owner informs them that the place is closed, politely asks them to leave. After some discussion amongst themselves, they seem to decide she's lying and demand their usual. See, crap. Owner is less polite this time, firmly asks them to leave. We're closed. Come back tomorrow. Whatever passes for a leader among this group, seriously, does it work on who has the stronger BO or who can wear the same hoodie the longest or something? does not like this and starts yelling about discrimination and demanding service specifically from me. I inform said Alpha Hoodie I actually stopped working several weeks ago, and even if I did still work there, there was no way I'd serve him acting like that. The guy didn't like this one bit, his voice went up several pitches, and he started squeak screaming about how we were discriminating against him, demanding I give their drinks for free, and how they were going to complain to the owner and have us all fired. I guess he figured females can't own and operate stores despite their name on the wall. Being refused again by myself and the owner and reminding them again that I no longer work there and, and then told much less politely to leave, the guy turns around about as red as the bag of Doritos I assume they had in store for later and has a total meltdown. We're talking toddler foot stomping screaming tantrum. I swear the guy was moments away from a heart attack with how red he was getting he rages about how women can't tell him what to do and that I'm lying because I'm too stupid to work elsewhere. Insert racial slurs here. He then uses his considerable bulk to push the espresso machine off the counter. Now, these things are not only very heavy, they're also very expensive. Tens of thousands of bags of Doritos expensive. The guy's having his tantrum when the police arrive probably not helped by the fact that once they had him sitting in the back of the car, I smirked and told him I didn't work there, setting him off again. Guy ended up being charged for a handful of things, including destruction of the machine. He and his pack were obviously banned from our cafe, and the neighboring ones all have a friendly relationship with us, also banned him. Icing on the cake, the local gaming shop also banned him and his crew and attempted to distance themselves as much as possible from that sort of patron. Adding in, still very good friends with the owner who now owns several cafes, she started her own chain, and I help out now and then when I'm off work and going to be there chilling with people anyway. Update. We'll answer a few questions and explain a few details. The machine itself costs somewhere in the region of 11 to 12,000 pounds, La Pavoni machine, so we're looking at 14 to 15,000 US dollars for the machine itself. When it was pushed over, a few things cracked, snapped, or bent, it had to be sent back to the manufacturer for repair. Thankfully, the country has a pretty huge love of coffee, so the owner was able to snag a loaner machine from our roaster until we had the machine back. Downside, the machines are connected to the water supply, so the rear of the counter drowned. The place was not only closed the following day for cleaning and setup of the new machine, so losses weren't as bad as they could be. Cost the owner zero dollars. However, insurance took a hit. The guy who did the damage had to cover the excess. The game store nearby was actually pretty happy to ban this particular group, while they apparently still had a few folks with substandard hygiene and placing on the tantrum scale, this group was one of the worst. So once they were banned, they later reopened some of the casual late nights for people to come into one-shot campaign and various games or board and card game nights. 
They also got enough foot traffic that the cafe started staying open an hour or so later on specific nights for takeaway coffee as there was enough people coming in from the shop. The place still had its issues during the more quiet parts of the day, but during the busy peaks when the worst offenders are hiding in their caves, it was generally a fun place to chill. The new Pathfinder seems great. Nostalgia is trying to tell me that it's not as good as the original, but that same nostalgia tells me that terrible CRPGs are good just because they're old and were fun when I was 10. Definitely liking the new Temple system and how they've worked races, sorry Ancestry, with feats everywhere. Overall seems like it's far more streamlined and much easier for new players to get into. Here's hoping for a Skulls and Shackles 2.0. The new char sheets are a work of art though. Coffee industry awards are a big sort of thing in the coffee industry. You have everything from the local best coffee slash atmosphere slash food in town all the way up to regional and national level, but many of these contests are self-entry and a lot of places don't bother or care. At the international stage, you have things like the best barista awards to boutique coffee types and funky coffee art awards. It's all interesting to watch, but I could never do more than just basic coffee art, so I stuck to making great, consistent coffee. Always found people didn't care how pretty their coffee was if it took 5 to 10 minutes to make and would rather have something that tastes good in half the time. And if you get takeaway, it's not like you can see the art anyway. Honestly, if you're taking more than 2 minutes per standard coffee, including cleanup, it's too long and you should be able to make 2 at the same time without sacrificing quality. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you again soon.